Hello and welcome to TechTredge. This little box is an entire computer, mostly. It's the Intel Nook and it is damn cheap. Subscribe to see more tech videos. The Nook, and you see, stands for Next Unit of Computing and is designed to be a PC in a very small form factor. This isn't actually that modern. This particular model is a few years old, but I picked it up for a project I'm working on and it's been pretty interesting to work with. The CPU in the Nook varies from model to model. You can have an i7 if you want, or you can do what I've done and get a PC for under $200 by choosing the model with the Celeron CPU. There is no RAM or hard drive included, so you can customize that however you'd like. The Nook takes laptop sodium memory, and this model only takes one stick of RAM and is limited to eight gigabytes. For hard drive, any two and a half inch SATA drive will do. I threw a spare sand disk SSD into mine and it works a treat. Modern Nooks take M2 drives as well. The form factor for this model is ideal, mainly because of its ability to be seamlessly mounted onto the back of any monitor with a VESA mount. The VESA bracket is included in the box and is well thought out. Simply screw the bracket onto the back of the monitor and screw in two special mounting screws into the bottom of the Nook and then the Nook simply clips onto the bracket. It's just as easy to remove. The I.O. options are pretty good too, considering the form factor. Four USB 3 ports, an SDXC card reader, HDMI and VGA out, a headphone and microphone combo jack, Bluetooth 4.0, Wi-Fi AC and Ethernet. Everything you should need for most use cases. But what are the use cases? With something this small, there are thermal limits, which will prevent this from being a great gaming or workstation PC. So I fail to see why you would ever need the i7 version, but the lower powered models have some compelling use cases. Where I think these would be ideal would be in schools or libraries or internet cafes where you need a lot of computers that don't really need a lot of power. They just need to handle some basic word processing, web browsing, maybe some layout design. And these little computers are ideal for that. They're cheap, they run independently so you don't need a sysadmin to set up virtual machines and they pack in all the power you need. While being very surmountable means you don't need to waste a lot of floor space with large towers and it also makes cable runs a lot neater and easier to manage. I would avoid the Celeron version for these uses and step up to an i3 model if it can be afforded since it offers a smoother experience. Another good use case is just as a basic family or office PC that's only used for web browsing, email, word processing, maybe Netflix. The i3 is again the better version for this as the Celeron does stumble under a moderate CPU load such as video decoding. It would be a great home theater PC as well. And these would be excellent thin clients in an enterprise environment as well. For those who don't know, a thin client is just a computer that exists to access another computer. For instance, you might just be using it to send commands over SSH into a server or as a client to access content from the cloud or a local server, in which case these are great for that. Finally, I also think they make good replacements for some embedded systems. I'm using mine to build a point of sale system for my restaurant and there will be a video released on that in the next two weeks. Performance is about in line with what you'd expect. The Celeron version does stutter occasionally, but it's largely pretty solid on Windows 10 with four gigabytes of RAM and an SSD. I would recommend stepping up to the i3 version or at the very least, definitely use an SSD and not a hard drive as that will smooth over a lot of the performance niggles. An upgrade to eight gigabytes of RAM would be recommended as well. Thermal seem all right. It never gets hot to the touch or thermal throttles, not that I'm using it for performance extensive tasks, but it does get quite loud under load. Louder than I'd be comfortable with at my desk, but for the price, I'm not going to complain. The system is stable and a solid performer. It was fairly easy to put together too. RAM simply clips in with ease and there's a drive sled for hard drives that is actually pretty tight. I had to use some force to get the drive in and then you still have to screw the drive in as well. Likewise, taking the bottom off requires a screwdriver and I'd really prefer everything to be completely toolless, but it's not a big deal. The screws on the bottom are secured so won't fall off even when loose. And that's the Intel Nook. I think it's a pretty great idea with lots of unique use cases. And if my experiments with it pay off, I'll be looking at buying lots more of them. Thanks for watching TechTredge. I'll see you next week with a video on an IPS touchscreen monitor by Acer. And the week after that with this in a proper build. See you later.